everybody. Welcome back to the Optimization Academy, where I introduce some of my favorite innovators in medicine, health, fitness, and beyond, and way beyond. And I am excited today to welcome Justine Stinger to our show. I have been promising to get some type of applause machine. I don't have it yet, but just know that there should be applause right here. In the future, there will be applause. So Justine, who I actually, another great speaker I met at the Peptide World Congress in Las Vegas recently, she received her degree from the University of Alberta, Canada, in nutrition. I guess I say Canada, right? Because in case any, there's another Alberta that I don't know about. In nutrition and physical education. So degree in nutrition, very important here. We'll talk more about that as we go forward. She has completed her functional medicine certification through the Institute of Functional Medicine and is a certified functional med... I'm sorry. That's where we hit that editing pause and is a certified functional medicine health coach. And that's amazing. So you know functional medicine and you know nutrition and we wanna welcome you to the show. But here's the deal. I know her as a queen of butyrate because she gave this presentation on butyrate at the, at the uh, PWC. And I was like, you know what? I need, to, I need to know more about this. Like it literally you know, stimulated that desire in me to learn more about this because I saw the benefits that you brought up about it. And I was like, this is something I want to talk about with my patients to be able to offer our patients here in Arizona. So welcome to the show, Justine. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. So, so how did you get from, because again, we talked a little bit about this before the show. We, when people think nutritionists, they're thinking, this is someone who tells me what to eat. And what not to eat. I want to lose some weight, I want to gain some muscle, talk to a nutritionist about that, right? How did you get from there to functional medicine and being so well versed in butyrate and cellular medicine? It was a long journey. So I started at, univer at the University of Alberta and I actually ended up um, getting my education degree because I didn't know, I didn't want to be a dietitian. I was really quite disturbed by the conventional education in dietetics. And so I hated teaching. And that was really what was the catalyst to pushing me into, I moved to Boulder, Colorado, and I did my therapeutic chef and I became a, a holistic nutritionist. And then I came back to Calgary. I got connected with uh, Dr. Bruce Hoffman out of the Hoffman Center in Calgary. And I started down the functional medicine road. So I did all of the modules with IFM and I did every educational course I could get my hands on. I did my certified gluten practitioner. I did my GAPS training. I did my MAPS training. I did my brain certification with AF4M. I was just really, really hungry for more and more knowledge. And then it was really my clinical experience that got me down the path of cell membrane medicine. And I adopted a few really amazing mentors in the field because there's not a lot of information out there on cell membrane medicine. And it was my mentors and what I saw clinically that really pushed me into this field and I want, made me want to educate more people uh, on the importance of cell membrane medicine and just really understanding that that's where we need to start. Our cells are the foundation of our health. And butyrate is one of those players that we can use to help support cellular health. So that's amazing and that's awesome. So it's kind of like you're setting this up and bringing out the next question because that is where we want to start. What is butyrate? Butyrate is a short chain fatty acid. So butyrate is a four carbon chain fatty acid that is made by our commensal bacteria through the fermentation of dietary fiber. So if you can think fiber plus fermentation equals butyrate. Now there's a couple of important things to consider when it comes to butyrate. We need to have those commensal bacteria to make the butyrate. Our diet and lifestyle are really big factors. And then we can add supplemental butyrate. So that's what butyrate is. That's how it's made. If we're not eating fiber, if we're not consuming resistant starch, we don't have the substrates to make butyrate. And that literally was going to be the next question I asked you was, <laughs> do we produce our own and what, you know, how do we, you know, how does that production reduce over time? So now you mentioned not having enough dietary fiber. Is there a certain type of dietary fiber that will help in that production? So that's a really interesting question. And there have actually been specific fibers that have been studied to see if they improve butyrate production. Mm -hmm. And the studies are mixed. So 
say inulin for an example, I've seen many studies on inulin supporting the supplement the supplementation of inulin supporting butyrate uh, production, and other studies show that it doesn't support butyrate production and can actually make it worse in some individuals. So that's a big reason why I think it's so important to make sure that we're eating a diverse plant rich diet and we're getting in a whole variety of different plant foods, a whole variety of phytonutrients to support our commensal bacteria to make that butyrate. So I don't think it's about ingesting mega doses of one or two different fibers. It's really that broad spectrum that's going to optimize our own butyrate production. Now, for those who are getting adequate fiber in their diet, um, you mentioned the fermentation. Is there a benefit in actually consuming more fermented foods along with that fiber in your own kind of native butyrate production at all? So that's not really related because the, gotcha. the, yeah, the um, fermentation process, the, the, your commensal bacteria are fermenting that fiber to make butyrate, which is the number one fuel for your colonocytes. I actually have very mixed opinions um, on ingesting fermented foods. And that's primarily because I work with so many patients that have mast cell activation syndrome or histamine intolerance, and they're just not able to tolerate any fermented foods. And we don't wanna be pouring gasoline on that already inflammatory fire. So it's, re it's important to remember that fermented foods are high in histamine and histamine needs to be kept in check. So if we have high levels of histamine in the gut that causes intestinal permeability, that breaches the blood brain barrier and can really contribute to uh, an inflammatory cascade. So fermented foods, I only recommend to certain demographics of individuals. That's great, love that answer. I was like, a, that was what I call a softball in the podcast talk <laughs> right there. I'm gonna throw this out there so you can knock it out of the park. So with that being said, we know that it's from the fermentation of short chain or fermentation of dietary fiber, so short chain fatty acid. Why is that important for our gut health? So there are a whole laundry list of benefits to butyrate. And I think it's important just to state that it's increasingly recognized that there is a connection between diet, intestinal microbiota, intestinal barrier function, and low grade inflammation. Um, that characterizes the progression from obesity to metabolic disturbances, making dietary strategies to modulate the intestinal environment really important. So butyrate is number one, the number one fuel for the colonocytes. So it provides about 70% of the fuel for our colonocytes. So when you are wanting to optimize gut health, if you're wanting to improve intestinal permeability, butyrate is your number one all-star player. Uh, because of that, it's providing the fuel for the colonocytes so that the colonocytes can do their work. It also has a really special quality on actually helping to improve tight junction integrity. So we use lots of dietary strategies and nutraceutical strategies to help improve gut health. Like L-glutamine is probably the most common one that practitioners are using, aloe vera, marshmallow root. There's a whole list of them. If you are not using butyrate, you are missing the point. We have to provide first that biological substrate that's driving the colonocytes, their functioning, improving intestinal permeability, lowering inflammation in the gut. It's lowering inflammation actually systemically throughout the entire body through the differentiation of T cells. So butyrate is a key, key player in uh, helping to improve gut health. Butyrate also helps to promote your own commensal bacteria. So you'll get an increase in bifido and lactobacilli just through using butyrate as a supplement. Now I get the question all the time, so I'm sure you're gonna ask me this. If somebody is making adequate levels of butyrate to support gut health, is it still beneficial to supplement with additional butyrate? And I always say yes, because when you look at the studies that are done on butyrate, uh, we talked about this earlier, they're using super physiological doses, anywhere between two and a half grams to about five, five and a half grams is usually what's used in the research. So I do think that when we supplement with butyrate and we top up our own um, reserves or top up that biological substrate, you see really miraculous improvements in gut health and brain health and that whole gut brain axis. One second here, sorry, I was, this is gonna be one of the edited portions right here because I my screen went a little blank on me and I'm back here. Okay, so that being said, now you mentioned the gut bacteria. Now you mentioned commensurate 
we say commensurate bacteria, right? So, yes. sorry. Commensal bacteria. Yeah, commensal. our own commensal bacteria. Okay. So we're gonna pause there, and we're rewinding. I'll start back here. So you mentioned that um, commensurate bacteria. Did I do it again? Commensal bacteria. Commensal. Jesus Christ. Okay. Pause it again. Sorry, it's been a long week, man. It's been long. Oh God. So you're making me feel much more comfortable. So I love it. <laughs> Rewind that again. Commensal. Correct though? Yeah. I don't know why I want to say commensurate. I don't know why the word pops man. Okay. So now you mentioned our own commensal bacteria. Now, for those that are not familiar with that term, what does that mean? Those are our healthy gut bugs. Those are the bugs that we want in the gut. Okay, got it. And so the, most people, when they think about that, this is where I, when I explain, when I go through my laundry list of why butyrate is important, I talk about dysbiosis in that relationship between their good gut bacteria and their bad gut bacteria. So knowing that we have this, this, this supplement, they can basically use, you know, safely to help improve that. That's important because we, we know that when that dysbiosis happens, they feel that, you know, that's going to be your diarrhea, the bloating, the abdominal pain, sometimes nausea, just the fatigue, all those things that that causes. Yeah. And so, premature aging, right? Mm -hmm. It's important to address that um, aspect too. It's premature aging and insulin resistance and high blood glucose levels you know, we really end up with metabolic disease when we don't have that adequate uh, microbial diversity and we don't have, we're not making enough butyrate. So it's really, really, really key for supporting the cells of our gut lining. Gotcha. And this leads to my next question. I love this. It's just like leaning right into it because you mentioned the insulin resistance. And so one of the things when we talk about gut health and gut function is how it's very, you know, self-evident how that gut health is essential to metabolism and a healthy metabolism. So how does butyrate relate to that or how does it kind of work within the framework of improving our metabolism? So studies do show that low levels of butyrate put you at high metabolic risk. So whether that's obesity, diabetes, I mean, there's a whole laundry list of different conditions that that uh, can lead to. And I mean, ultimately premature aging. So there are stud there's study after study after study that shows that butyrate, again, improves insulin sensitivity, it lowers blood glucose levels. So I have used butyrate a lot on women that have PCOS or high blood glucose levels. And just with the addition of that butyrate supplement, their blood glucose levels come down really nicely. So you can use that as kind of a tool or a hack as some people, uh, the term that some people use in the biohacking world to help to improve uh, blood glucose levels and stabilize those levels through the course of the day. And we know that that stabilization of the blood glucose levels are so key in uh, overall health. Um, uh, but especially when we're treating somebody that has chronic illness or disease, that's the first place that we have to start. We need to first work on cellular health. We need to stabilize blood glucose levels, and then we can get to work. Perfect. It's, and it all, it just all comes together when we think about, and I've had several other podcasts, we talk about inflammation and the uh, connection between inflammation and blood sugar and insulin resistance and how this ages you. You know, because now, you know, you get more inflammation. We talk about more of the, you know, senescent cells and it just, you know, it, the list goes on and on. And so bringing this full circle to gut health, I think is essential for our listeners here and those out there that are trying to optimize their health and looking for that other piece of the puzzle. I'm sorry, looking for that other piece of the puzzle because we talk about hormone optimization. We talk about peptide therapy. We talk about IV. We talk about all of this, but I never want people to forget about the importance of gut health because it is essential you know you can't you can't take away from that so um and those metabolic i'll just sorry i don't mean uh, to interrupt, but i'll just say those not, metabolic yeah. those metabolic complications yeah. are improved by improving the intestinal barrier right and improving the microbial diversity so i know that there's a lot of emphasis that um it has been put recently on gut health but i'm just going to emphasize it again because those microbial th those microbes in the gut also impact our brain so when you look at now taking butyrate to improve gut health you're simultaneously improving improving brain health you're improving that whole gut brain axis and then there's even more neurological benefits to butyrate because butyrate does cross the blood brain barrier and it can block inflammatory pathways like nf kappa b and has been shown to be it can also be used as a fuel source in the brain 
So really powerful tool in not only preventing neurodegeneration, they're actually using butyrate in conventional studies currently to treat neurodegeneration, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, ALS, Huntington's disease. So it's a, it's a powerful, powerful tool. And again, when looking at neurological health, they, they do use those super physiological doses. So this is not just having enough butyrate to support your colonic health. This is the additional butyrate that's going to help support your brain, in, inflammatory processes, et cetera. Awesome. Now, I'll say, going back to the gut health, and gut-related disease. Now we mentioned dysbiosis. We mentioned, mentioned inflammation. Are there any? And you mentioned uh, PCOS, which is obviously not gut, but just thinking about different conditions that we use butyrate to help treat. Are there any um, specific gut health or gut-related diseases that you've seen in the research and with some of the clinical experience that your practitioners have talked about with preventing or treating any other gut diseases? IBD. Okay. Crohn's awesome. and colitis, huge, 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 huge. So really important for anybody that has IBD. The other really amazing characteristic of butyrate is it acts as a histone deacetylase inhibitor. So not only is it preventing colorectal cancer, but it's also protecting against all forms of cancer. And I know that at the conference, I made that statement uh, in one of my slides. And I always feel like that's such a bold statement to say that this, this biological substrate, this short chain fatty acid, is protective against all forms of cancer. But that is, that's what the research shows. And there's more and more studies that are coming out all the time verifying that. That's amazing. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. I'm looking forward to seeing more and more research on that. So one of the, you know, I feel like it's kind of like been that elephant in the room as we've been talking about this throughout this talk and some of the other um, podcasts I've had is about inflammation. And so I love to spend some time here discussing how butyrate can help with reducing inflammation. So no spray for gut health, no spray for the plomocytes, but a little bit more on the science behind it, right? Not obviously you're not taking taking a run to med school or you know, the University of Calgary or Alberta. And so <laughs> and all that, but I want to make sure we understand like how it affects those inflammatory proteins and inflammatory markers. So because for me, it's the education piece of it, right? Because you can easily say, hey, take some butyrate, it's gonna help with your inflammation, but if you understand why. I think that helps drive it home and why this is very important for our patients and uh, listeners out there. So I think through a number of different pathways and many that I probably don't even know about, I think the histone deacetylase inhib inhibition is huge. Um, also again, just by sealing and healing those tight junctions and preventing intestinal permeability, um, pre preventing intestinal permeability. And then also through the differentiation of T cells. So you're really controlling that whole inflammatory process throughout the entire body. So those are some pathways um, and mechanisms as to how it acts as an anti-inflammatory. And I'm sure there's many more that I'm not even aware of. Yeah. And I'm sure you could speak to that as well. I'm sure you know more about that than I do. Yeah, yeah actually, um, the two that I looked at when I was looking at the research were resolvins and protectants. Oh, and gosh, I can't even believe I forgot to mention that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Butyrate um, induces the production of resolvins and protectins. And you know what else it does? It um, helps with the production of glutathione. Yeah. So that's also a powerful property. Exactly. So everyone's running out to the, their nearest store to get butyrate. I'm going to talk about the form yeah, of butyrate I'll here at the end. I know, I know. <laughs> and, the, and the different form. Because again, that's going to be important at, at the end because you can Google butyrate or go on Amazon and look for butyrate but it's about the right butyrate. And I want to talk about that at the end as well, because you need to know, like, cause there's not just, they don't all, you know, not they all, they're not all the same flavor and what they're bound to and the concentrations and all that. So I definitely want to make sure people get some education on that here today. So now that we're here, and this is where I want you to kind of bring it all together, because when it comes to optimizing health, a lot of times people use the word anti-aging. Mm -hmm. And so I want to spend a little time discussing how butyrate can be effective and essential to any, any anti-aging or longevity or optimization protocols that people are using out there. Perfect. So I love the longevity term and I love health span. I think that I don't, I don't know if it's possible to anti-age. Um, so I'm, <laughs> I'm going to talk about some of the reasons why we want to include butyrate into our program if we are interested in extending our health span, lifespan. 
first and foremost, I think we look at the research, when we look at the research on older populations, they have a very disrupted microbial population. So they don't, they lack diversity, they lack numbers. Uh, there's lots of intestinal permeability, lots of inflammation in the gut. So I think that's uh, a fantastic tool for uh, as we age to be able to use butyrate to help improve microbial diversity. And you do see that when older populations of people supplement with butyrate, you see very similar microbiomes to a younger population. So that's huge. Uh, then when we look at just supporting the whole gut brain axis, we know that butyrate, one of the properties that I didn't even mention mention about butyrate is it does support the blood-brain barrier uh, and it improves blood-brain barrier integrity. And we know that if that blood-brain barrier is breached, that is leading to neurodegeneration. I mean, when we get inflammation in the brain, that's not going anywhere good. Uh, so if we can use butyrate as a tool to help improve the integrity of the blood-brain barrier, that's also a, a massive benefit um, as we age because as we age, everything slows down, right? So we need to use some of these tools to help um, support our body so that it can do the work that it needs to do. Now, I don't think that I can talk about anti-aging, anti longevity, health span without talking about phosphatidylcholine uh, and this being such a critical um, supplement. I mean, choline is, a, is an essential nutrient, but phosphatidylcholine is so important, specifically as we age, uh, because we have a decreased ability to synthesize phosphatidylcholine and all the phospholipids as we age. So just taking it back to that most simple biological symptom, uh, system, the cell. And we know that when we, when we have a membrane that is intact and has structure and integrity and stability and fluidity, now we have all the organelles within the cell that are able to work at their peak level. So the phosphatidylcholine piece, I think is something that is missed often and absolutely critical for anyone that is interested in prolonging their health span. And phosphatidylcholine deficiency is rife. We don't test for it, so we don't, we don't know. Uh, but when you do test for it through uh, a couple of labs that are out there, you do see across the board uh, people low in phosphatidylcholine. I'm glad you brought that up. I'm a big fan of that. I, I've been doing more research on phosphatidylcholine, and um, I think about you want, give me one. I'm gonna pause that really quick because my mind and this is going to be an edited piece here for some reason when you brought that up i remember sitting in a lecture uh they were talking about alpha gpc and um i was like wait is that a hospital calling because i'm sorry i can look that up well, this is no, they, they take alpha GPC, I think, to improve synthesis of phosphatidylcholine. I don't, makes... I don't recommend that, though. Okay. Yeah. Got it. You have a good reason for that? Because I want to talk about I, that. I No, I don't. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to. Yeah, yeah. There is a, there is a mentor that I had that um, has, I mean, I've spent hours and hours and hours talking to her about um, cellular health. And she always said to stay away from alpha GPC. And I don't know why. All right. So we, we're going to say, we're going to rewind all that. We don't want to put that all that. And that's going <laughs> to put that. All right. Give me one second here. Okay. Da, 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 da. So I'm going to start at, um, thanks for bringing that up with the hospital choline, because that's something we should all be aware of when it comes to optimizing our health. Okay. Ready? Yep. Go on again. All right. Well, thanks for bringing that up because I do believe that, that hospital choline is essential in our longevity and wellness and healthy aging programs as well. So, and it all comes together, right? How do we improve cell health? How do we improve gut health? How do we reduce inflammation? How do we keep oxidation under control? All these things come into play when it comes to improving our health. Now, we're at a point where we've been hyping up butyrate telling you all how awesome it is and all that good stuff. Now the big thing is how to get it. So the first question and being a nutritionist and being into food, because we all like to eat, is that, you know, when it comes to sourcing of getting more butyrate in our, in our programs, are there any foods out there that are high in butyrate to consider? Yes. And I would love to speak to that. So again, I think doing what I do, I can't not talk about nutrition and, and lifestyle. Those are, those are two key pieces to any longevity program. So you can't out supplement, you can't out biological substrate, a poor diet and a poor lifestyle. So we can increase our fiber 
So I always recommend nine cups of vegetables every day. That's gonna be about 72 grams of fiber. I also really encourage including forms of resistant starch. So green bananas, green plantains, green mango, uh, green papaya is an excellent source of um, resistant starch. And then you can actually increase the resistant starch levels in foods like rice and starchy roots and tubers just by cooking them, cooling them, and then that resistant starch level is gonna increase. And then you can reheat them and glean the benefits of higher resistant starch levels. So those are all the foods that I can think of off the top of my head. Again, I think it's important to pay attention to making sure that you're getting those in. So I personally am always making, putting a green banana in my smoothie or eating green plantains, or when I cook sweet potatoes, I know we had the very beginning, I said I had to turn off my oven. I've got the sweet potatoes in my oven. I will mash them, I will cool them, and then I'll warm them up before dinner. So I do plan ahead that way to make sure I'm getting in higher levels of resistant starch. And I think that's a pretty easy thing to do, especially when you're considering cooking and cooling some of the roots and tubers or rice. Uh, you can just plan ahead and have food in the refrigerator and then warm it up. Okay. Um, it's interesting we talked about inflammation because one, when you do a cursory you know, Google search, right, on foods high in butyrate, first thing that comes up is dairy and ghee butter and uh, some things that are a little bit more on the inflammatory side of things. So I'm glad you went there first because obviously vegetables are going to be a great source of that and your um, resistant starches, of course. So um, yeah, don't go eating spoons of ghee to increase your butyrate people. And, out there. and the like, levels of, of butyrate in ghee compared to supplementation are very, very low. Uh, I mean, I would recommend ghee over ingesting butter just because mm -hmm. the dairy proteins have been removed. But yeah, I'm not a huge saturated fat pusher generally. So I think we can do a lot better job of using supplementation and also some of those foods that I listed to get in that butyrate. For sure. Now with butyrate, I alluded to it earlier, are there different forms of it? Like what it's bound to? Because I know we, I've seen sodium butyrate on the market. I've seen calcium butyrate. I've seen some just straight butyrate on labels. So um, butyrate sodium, I mentioned that already as well. So um, is there a difference that people need to be aware of in the different types of butyrate? Yeah, so butyrate, so butyric acid, I think if you've seen a brand that just says butyrate, butyrate, butyric acid has to be bound to something. So it's typically mm -hmm. bound to a mineral salt or a glycerol. So tributrin would be attached to a glycerol and body bio butyrate would be attached as an example of a butyrate that's attached to a mineral salt. So I personally, I'm biased because I've used body bios products clinically for so long and I know that they work. So I always recommend body bio sodium butyrate. The sodium butyrate is the true biological substrate and the sodium butyrate is what is done in all the literature that I've read. So that's what I recommend as a first choice. And then, I mean, the brand, the, the company at which you buy butyrate from the purity and the quality and their quality control is so important. So again, that's why I always go with Body Bio because I know they are getting the most pure raw materials. They're testing. Uh, there's no additives. You're not going to get any of these artificial flavors and colors. And um, uh, so I that's that's the company that I always go with and always recommend is the Body Bio Butyrate Sodium Butyrate is my favorite. Now, something you brought up earlier about getting uh, benefits is using that super physiological dosing of sodium butyrate um, or butyrate. Sorry, what would you what would that be considered uh, in your in your viewpoint? Because I know I've seen six hundred milligrams, I've seen one point two milligrams, I've seen two point four, I've seen three point six. Um, yeah, so what can you share on the dosing for us? So I think that we should always dose according to metabolic demand, size, weight muscle mass, uh, state of health or state of disease. So for instance, if somebody is in more of a chronic state of disease or chronic disease state, I would dose the butyrate significantly higher than somebody that is just using the butyrate to optimize their health or if they're already a healthy, a healthy person. Now, when you look at the literature, you see dosing anywhere between two and a half to about five grams of butyrate. I know that when I talk to Dr. Seeds at the World Peptide Congress, he recommends even higher than that for some people. He's using up to eight grams daily. 
So if I could use the body biobutyrate as an example, I would do two capsules of the body biobutyrate at every meal as a really general recommendation. I don't think everybody would need that much. Some people might need more. Like any supplement, you always wanna start really low and slow. You wouldn't wanna start at two capsules three times a day, but that would be a general recommendation. But again, I think it's always best to dose supplements like we would pharmaceutical drugs. Awesome. Appreciate that. Well, this has been great. I feel my knowledge of butyrate has uh, expanded tremendously just in this short conversation. I hope for those listening that you have got something out of this as well. And we were, before we started, we were setting our intent about people learning about butyrate, getting something out of this conversation and be able to you know, learn more about it and understand how it can be essential to improving their health. So that being said, where can we find you? You can find me on Instagram. I talk a lot about cellular health. Uh, just at Justine Stanger is my Instagram handle. You can also apply for a body bio account. And I do a lot of training with practitioners through body bio. I'm not on Facebook a lot. Instagram is the best place to find me. Okay. Sounds good. And that's where I, I think besides the conference, that's where I found you as well. It's yeah. like, you know what? I want to talk to her more about this amazing butyrate. So that being said, thank you, Justine. I appreciate your time. Thank you again for being with us today. We look forward to talking to you again in the future. Stay warm up there in Canada because I think you guys have an actual winter. So, you know. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, thank you. Oh, look at that. Oh, look, look who just showed up in the corner there. It's my <laughs> Those on YouTube, you'll see the cutest dog who just literally woke up at the end. Like, is it over? I heard it was over. <laughs> Time for, it's time for you to play with me. So, hey, thanks again, Justine. We appreciate your time again, and we'll talk to you soon. I'll talk soon. Thanks. Thanks.